Greetings, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Living on Music, or should I be calling it Livingston on Music, <laughs> considering who my fabulous guest is for this next episode of Living on Music. Um, behind me, you see a wonderful performing arts center in Martha's Vineyard, and that is uh, a place I've always passed when I was younger. We were in Nantucket most of my summers. And I went to Martha's a couple of times, but what a f very, very special place and um, an incredibly special place to my guest, Livingston Taylor, um, who uh, has a house there as well as his parents buying a house in 1963. But this is the, um, again, Martha's Vineyard Performing Arts Center where Livingston played, um, I believe, uh, in early August this year. And but what a treat to have a man like Livingston Taylor, an American singer, songwriter, and folk musician. He was born in Boston, raised in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and is the brother of that guy uh, that you all know, the singer, songwriter, James Taylor. What a family. We're going to talk about growing up with a family of mus musical um, phenomenon like, like the Taylors, but uh, Livingston went on and became a wonderful singer songwriter. He's most notable for Billboard hits like "I Will Be in Love with I Will Be in Love with You," and uh, you'll hear a little clip of that, I believe, in the show. First time love he wrote, "I'll Come Running." There's other wonderful songs that he's written, and so many um, moments of music, uh, special music for this man. He continues to perform nationally and inter internationally. Multiple gigs coming up, including one at the Birchmere, and that is with another Living on Music uh, guest coming up soon. Uh, he's playing with Carla Bonoff on a tour uh, starting in Ohio and then going across uh, some places, and what a wonderful thing that is in December 12th at the Birchmere. He's doing a songwriters festival in December, as well as a wonderful two-night stint in, in Florida with Tom Chapin, um, uh, another amazing, amazing folk rocker. Anyway, what a treat it is to have this gentleman here. And we're going to talk about, again, his uh, current life, past, present, and future. We call it on Living on Music. And again, it's not living on music. It's living stun on music. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please give a warm Living on Music welcome to Livingston Taylor. Livingston Taylor, I, I, I'm going to call it, instead of living on music, I'm going to call it Livingston on music today. <laughs> sir. Livingston welcome. on music. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, Steve, it is such my pleasure. Delighted to be with you today. And Thank uh, yeah, thanks for taking time to talk to me. My pleasure. And look, we're going to go down the incredible road uh, of your life a little bit too. But right now, let's talk a little bit about what's going on right now, which is some pretty amazing stuff. I, I looked on the on the, uh, the gig list that you have, and there's some wonderful things coming up. One, one, one reason I love having you on is because mm -hmm. I'm a longtime Birchmere colleague and you're playing there on December 11th. Oh, are you interviewing Carla? Tomorrow? Yes. All right. You'll tell her, you'll give her my love. I will. Wait a second. I'm spoiling your introduction right now. No, not at all. No, <laughs> you, you could never do anything like that. Um, but you and Carla playing. So that's going to be really fun. But you, Carla, that's right. Carla Bonoff, Livingston Taylor. Uh, what we're, we're into the, yes, we're into the Birchmere for the, uh, the Christmas. Um, uh, a sort of Christmas themed, right? Right, and I know she has some mm -hmm. uh, uh, Christmas stuff as well as you do, and it's just oh. going to be beautiful. I I love the fact that you're playing there. You're also doing you got a songwriters festival coming up, then a, a two gig thing in Florida with Tom Chapin. So you're yes. con you're continuing to roll along live. How does it feel to be back out there after this last two and a half years? Oh uh, well, the COVID for all of us was a really um, was a really disruptive and uh, uh, and profound experience. My my own sense about the COVID is um, uh, basically it made us all. Uh, it seems to have made us all crazy. And what's fascinating as as sanity slowly returns, um, what happens? What happens to us is 
is is that it's a surprise right. that things are not quite as crazy anymore. Right. I I found that feeling after the uh, after those uh, after the sort of midterm elections. This is the most important election in the history of anything, you know. And I think to myself, well, I'm not really sure it's more important than the uh, 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 elections of 1860, right. after which the entire South seceded from the Union. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, okay. Whatever superlative you need to throw on to get people to go from um, a, a bounties paper towel commercial to a <laughs> anti-cholesterol drug commercial, right? You know, whatever you need to do on Fox or MSNBC or sure. CNN to 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 keep people panicked enough to stay with you, yes. and and I I love the notion that you feel. Uh, uh, our citizens going, don't do this to us. Right, anymore. right. We were alarmed through COVID for good reason because we didn't understand it. Right. But now um, let us get back to leading our lives. Let us get back to the uh, to the problems at hand, right. which are substantial. Uh, I don't need additional artificial. I don't need one side or the other telling me that the world is going to end right. if the other side gets in charge. And the answer is, it may, right? But it's probably not going to. Yeah, exactly. And and you did find some ways to keep going during this last two and a half years with some some wonderful stuff online, which so many of my one hundred and seventy five to two hundred guests who I've had on yeah. the show since it began, and I began yeah. this show in the pandemic to yeah. give musicians a chance to engage. I had a bit of a little clip I wanted to roll mm -hmm. er, early on, which I love. It's from your Beach Road weekend. Yeah, uh, uh, online stuff in Martha's Vineyard. This, you guys, is a w great way to kick it off. And we'll have Livingston play a little music for us right there as well. But this is a wonderful piece. Uh, you said it's about teenage angst, which I... Yeah. <laughs> and All right, well, uh, roll away. Um, uh, as, as most politicians in the world, I too become nerved up at, in anticipation of former video. But... Uh. What what the hell, Steve? Let oh, it it's go. great. It's great. And I only roll stuff that make you guys look fabulous. This you guys I will, are, well, yeah. I will I will let you know whether you were <laughs> successful or oh, not. Oh god. Here we go from Beach Road Weekend in Martha's Vineyard, which again right behind me is the yeah. Performing Arts Center. We'll talk about uh Livingston's life in Martha's Vineyard too as well. Here's a little bit of If I Were You. And because it's summer, we're going to do a light song. This is a song that involves teenage angst. I can sing songs about teenage angst because I'm so very, very far away from it. If for the moment you were me, and I were you, how would it be? Would you fall apart when I walk by? Hang around to catch my guy. Be jealous of another guy. If I were you and you were I. Would everybody laugh at you? Would they wonder what you're trying to do? Would you have to find a place where a love like ours is no disgrace? Would you have to touch the sky if I were you? Yeah, Livingston, I love that because, again, it shows the fact, sir, that your playing is still very strong. Your voice sounds wonderful. How do you feel going out playing uh, again? And as well, at this stage in your career, how are things feeling? Your voice and your and your playing sounds wonderful. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, uh, I am feeling uh, I am feeling very strong. Gee, I don't know. Um, I don't even. 
uh, I've been doing something recently. Right. That has been, uh, it was conceptualization of mine. Right. Um, now, this is going to get a little technical. Is that all right? Bring it in. Yes. Okay, I didn't realize I was going to do this. So just hold on. What happened was I was out. I've been thinking about getting older. Uh, it was my birthday yesterday. Oh, and, happy uh, birthday. Uh, uh, and I'm 72 years old. And I've been very interested in watching, for instance, I went to Fenway Park to see Paul McCartney, not because I needed to relive uh, uh uh, those days, but I was very intrigued by how he was doing right. at 80 because he's my future. And by the way, it was uh, optimistic. He did fine. But I was I was thinking about and I want I want your uh, 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 viewers to have a sense of this, the to sing accurately. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is you want to move that diaphragm right. and no motion in the lungs at all. You want the lungs to be absolutely fixed and direct the flow of air up over the vocal cords right. into the mouth. As you get older, your capacity to control that flow reduces. Right. So what I did was I took a belt and I took this and I put it. Now, I want to say something. I am not a physical therapist. I am not a doctor. I'm a singer. And medically, I don't know what <laughs> I'm doing. So please, please do not commit to end. So anyhow, I took this strap. Right. And I've tried many different types, et cetera, but this is pretty easy to carry. And what I what I've done is I've taken this and I go, here's here's the uh, sternum is here. Right. On top of that, I go just right there and then breathe out like a horse when you're saddling them. Wow. And now. And now if you uh, I. I don't use this when I sing, but what you can see is testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, I'm as corny as Kansas in August. I'm as normal as blueberry pie. No more a smart little girl with no heart. I got found me a wonderful guy. So here I am. I have not sung one note today. Not one. Wow. And I can just. Oh, my. Wow. Now, it has been. So I, I, uh, I turned my brother James on to it. And I turned, I've been turning slowly other people onto it. And again, let me just, so what the belt does is it tells you where your chest is and if you're expanding it or not. So you put a certain amount of tension there. But look at that rib cage. Yeah. It never moves. Oh I've been my. calling it the belt oh and uh well look uh, livingston it's, it's I've been, absolutely I've been... it is miraculous to finally get your voice going clearly effortlessly through your vocal cords with absolute precision well that is oh. that is an incredible thing to know not only from you but i've been i've been a lead singer for about 17 years in bands around washington dc i started yeah. late in life so I'm gonna keep your I'm gonna keep your advice as I get older. I'm 61 now, so yeah. as I go along, I'd like. Oh. To oh, by the way, you can do it right now. Nice. And put it on, tighten it up. Sometimes I use a weightlifter's belt, um, just uh, brought up, obviously, uh, brought up a little bit. Um, oh. uh, it requires a bit of a bearing. Uh, it's going to make your uh, uh, your stomach larger 
uh, 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 the bad news. The great news is that, but again, when you when you do this, you will not believe the improvement this makes in your control. And uh, yeah, I've been doing it now for about uh, uh, for about uh, six months. Oh, so new, new, new. Wow. Just conceptualized it this year as a remedy for the uh, for. Uh, uh, but but I have a former student who's forty years old, and it made his singing explode. No, oh. this is very very successful. You're going to be very pleased with this. Oh, I'm excited. All to right, learn enough that. on a vocal technique. Let's move on. To, oh, uh, I love that though. Yeah. Oh. Hey, well, um, Livingston, if uh, now that you've just talked about your voice and, and yeah. that belt, how about uh, playing us something? What would you like to? What would you like to roll? Here we go. I know a place where dreams are born And time is never planned It's not on any chart You must find it with your heart Never, never land It may be miles beyond the moon Oh, right there where just have an open mind And then suddenly you find Never, never land You'll have a treasure if you stay there More precious far than gold For once you have found your way there Never go home. So come with me where dreams are born and time is never planned. Just think of lovely things and your heart will fly on wings forever in never. Thank you for just giving me joy. You know, that, Julie, Julie Stein's song. How 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 wonderful when Julie Stein bop, do, 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 right. first time ba da ba do 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 second time ba do do do, do ba da ba do 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 and then the third time listen to what he does ba do do do, do ba da ba 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 to that diminished chord. Wow. Forget about it. <laughs> Forget it's, about it. Forget about it. It's the best. Yeah. Uh, it's beautiful. I, I loved every second. Thanks so much for that. And it, it seems a perfect segue into just talking, Livingston, about your musical journey. Um, again, what a family. Um, mm. You're the fourth of five children. Yeah. Our oldest brother, Alex, Alex. Uh, died. That's right. Um, about he was 45 so yeah it's coming up on you know it's uh uh, uh certainly uh th yeah 30 years ago well and uh, what a repertoire of music with that family that had to be an incredible place at your age as a young boy and i love some of the quotes about your mother trudy talking about how you were always inventing things and that you and james would make stringed instruments out of gourds and you just create this yeah. what was the reason livingston that music became such an integral part of your life at such a young age you know i think that that one of the things uh, our father uh, was raised in north carolina right and he went to and he went to 
uh, the University of North Carolina as an undergrad, and then went to Harvard Medical School, where he really shone brightly. Wow. He um, uh, So th- we're talking now the 40s. He's in medical school. He does right. his residency at MGH, uh, Massachusetts General. And yeah. he's chief resident, and he's president of his class at medical school. And, and eventually, my father came to understand that in the 40s, that if you came from the South in the 40s, the the fact is that there was virtually no chance of you rising to the highest levels of medicine or anything else. So this notion that if you came from the South, so my father uh, I, he never expressed it that way to me, but I think he really understood. And he came back and eventually was the dean of the medical school at the right. University of North Carolina. But he really understood that there was a ceiling as to where you could go um, uh, as a Southerner. Right. Um, and that was a post-Civil War reality. So in North Carolina, the sense that you could be a musician a playwright, a potter, a creator, a dancer, that you could do these things. This was perfectly reasonable. Where in, if you lived in Boston or New York, they'd say, why? You can be a lawyer <laughs> and be on the Supreme Court. Right. And and that wasn't going to be possible. Right. Um, practically. Right. Uh, in that contemporary society. Sure. So uh, when we started making music, uh, and assembling songs and uh, walking that path. Right. My parents were very enthusiastic about it. Wow. And it started just so wonderfully early with the, with all of you playing the, this whole swath of what African songs, union songs, folk hymns, radio jingles. I love the yeah. fact that you're, you're a growing ocean of music for the youngs, for the, all of you. Now it seemed to hit all of the kids, right? No, at least a little bit on each of you. Well, James, uh, our sister Kate, and myself write and play guitar, etc. Alex was a wonderful singer, right. and our younger brother Hugh, uh, yes. very much alive, but um, a restaurateur. But Huey's very good on stage and very, uh, very good in public. Right. And certainly, uh, my father was very good in public, and in um, uh, uh, just. Uh, very comfortable on a stage, all of us. Right, and you, you, I've I've read that that Alex really inspired you because he came home one night uh, after a fraternity party, and you said, "Hmm, music that," and you picked yeah. up the and that's did that was that really an inspiration? Well, it was. Alex came home. Uh, and uh, I was. I'm one of these guys who likes to know and does know how things work. And I understood at a very early age that you were going to have to make a living and you were going to make a living by being of service. And what adolescence is, is figuring out how you're going to be of service to your peer group. Sure. And so when I saw Alex, I was 12 years old, 11 or 12 years old. He came home from a frat house and he had made 20, that's two zero dollars wow. making music that did not go unregistered <laughs> with me <laughs> and, and, right, um, and it wasn't long after that livingston when you began playing in public for paying you know and yeah. part of a folk trio with with paul and kim and oh you covered and my god that you yeah that you've dug out these details someplace very impressive paul collins and kim page and i have no idea where they are today right um but uh we had a a uh, little folk trio. And uh, uh, yes, uh, that was my first paying show. And I was what, you know, right. 13. Yeah. And a rock and a rock group uh, for a short period of time in junior yeah. high. So you had your little rock, rock, rock moment in school. Yeah. Uh, little rock moment. Very little. Rock. <laughs> I love at that time, though, that that's when your parents bought. Yep their home in Martha's Vineyard and it became a central part of your life because later on you purchased your own home. You still have that home in Martha's Uh, Vineyard? I do still have a home on Martha's Vineyard and uh, 
And I, uh, I'm in outside of Boston in Watertown, Massachusetts right now. Right. It's where we're do, having this conversation. But uh, I have a home on Martha's Vineyard and it's uh, 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 in COVID. I was down there a lot. And so. Right. Uh, and as I get a little older, I'm now splitting my time. I taught at the Berkeley College of Music for a number of years. Yes. But, uh, but uh, I retired at the start of COVID from that. And uh, I'm now teaching uh, uh, on a part-time basis at the Frost School of Music, oh. University of Miami. Wow. And uh, I am very, very happy there. Oh, uh, wow. You know, instead of Berkeley's uh, five plus thousand students, um, which really uh, turning into a bit of a factory. Frost has got 800 students and oh. they are really good. Oh, um, I love that. Yeah. And when I, when I was researching you, I f saw the Berkeley thing. And I, as I told you, I spent mm -hmm. my college years in Boston and yeah. so many friends at Berkeley and so many people on this show um, have been Berkeley that had to still be a wonderful experience for you. For oh, you. Oh, no, it was absolutely great. But, you know, Berkeley needed to morph as institutions do. Uh, I'm a practitioner. Right. I would go out and work and then come to college uh, for one or two days a week and teach students as a working, touring musician. And, uh, and so I taught as a practitioner. Wow. And to make such institutions go well, what you really want to hire are not irascible, uncontrollable practitioners. You want to hire docile, trained academics. Yeah. Then the whole thing goes more smoothly. You give right. everybody a little gold star. Oh, aren't you wonderful? Here's a star. Yeah. Your mother is absolutely right. You're really special. <laughs> and, you know, and, and it's just not the way I'm going to teach. Um, right. I'm kicking ass and taking names. Uh, <laughs> Frost? Uh, at Frost. I love it. Yeah. Oh, yay. I can't wait to hear uh, to read it more on Frost. I, I'm I sorry. I didn't mean to get quite so carried away. You, you can. That's that. what, that's, that, but, that, but you're it, allowed on it, Living on Music to do that. But it, but it really is. It, it really is a, a, a situation. You you um, uh, uh, show business uh, choosing and living a creative lifetime, uh, lifestyle, Steve, as you well know, it's hardball. Right. This is um, this is blue collar work here. Blue yeah. collar, blue right. collar work. Uh, but, but yes, blue collar work. Right. It's it. This is um, this is not an intellectual exercise. This is lots of uh, hard traveling with heavy lifting at the end of the day. Yes, uh, it's a wild ride. You are on it still, though. See, that's what oh I'm yeah, but, you know, going 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 full steam. Um, what I loved Livingston, looking up at twenty, yeah. you were the one of the first artists to sign with Capricorn, and yeah. as a Southern rock fan in the sixties yeah. and seventies in Connecticut, Capricorn and I went to Macon and we saw recently we saw what Capricorn the old studio that mm. must have been that had to be a wonderful beginning to what has begun what is now a fifty to sixty year musical life with Capricorn Records. Was that when things really kicked kicked off for well, you? Uh, a, a life is often random chance. Uh, 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 for males, life is either um, uh, random chance or uh, you're following a female someplace. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, uh, and in the case of uh, Macon, uh, it was random chance because I was dealing with a guy named John Landau. Yes. Uh, who became a writer for Rolling Stone and yep. Rolling Stone had just started and he was doing an article for Rolling Stone on this brand new publication on Otis Redding. And Otis Redding had come out of Capricorn and Phil Walden. And so I was 19 years old, perhaps 18. And I went down to Macon with John Landon. Oh, that's amazing. And Phil Walden and Capricorn signed me. And, you know, uh, 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 I couldn't tell my uh, uh, I didn't know my butt from a tea bag in those days, and uh, just said okay, you know, you know, started making music.
Oh yeah, you sure did. And John Lando, as I'm a, I'm a lifetime Bruce Springsteen fan. I mean, yep. John, John has had an incredible run with him, but also put that out in the in Cambridge when Bruce saw uh, that article saying, you know, that there's a there's a new person that's going to change music, and that's yep. wonderful. Um, you had that run. I wanted to play a little bit of your early music for people, just from the record. And this okay. is from this is from Living the first album, Livingston Taylor. Just a little bit of the sense of that music when it came out. Everybody here is a little. Sit on back. I'm sitting with and all about the things I see. Called on the board of meat and raised by salary. You go, so I don't know what you hope to find. Said to back and get a thought track and an easy time. Yeah, yeah. Come on and do your neighbor is your labor worth a while won't you stop it for a moment and smile you do your wife and do your lawn but do you be long and you want to stop a blunder all your life is gone and over to my left there's a deep blue sea check up on my rider looking so tasty you go so i don't know what you hope to find said to back and get a thought track and an easy time yeah, yeah Stand up What do you think you see, my girl? Stand up Draw out to misery Get together with the me Well, no oh, I love it. And that's when your music began uh, to kind of expand and, uh, wow, uh, what? what? Uh, well, you know, just listening to that early stuff, it was so long ago, and and I'm proud of it, but I'm also bemused by it. Uh, how, uh, as I said in a later song, um, uh, how how did I stay alive? Oh. Uh, one of the things when I heard that first record, one of the right. things that I really understood was that I needed to sing better. And uh, after I made that first record, I uh, found a great voice teacher and I've always had vocal coaching through my entire career. And I'm right. absolutely stunned when I see my contemporaries who don't have, wow. this singing is a very physical act. Right. And when I see uh, my contemporaries who don't have vocal coaches, I just go, what? what right what are you thinking here right um, yeah right uh, it's a surprise to me no i bet and you did a couple more records in the early 70s and i love the fact that you did um your third and final record for capricorn was over the rainbow yeah um and what was the thought process for covering that legendary song <laughs> Well, you, you know, it's it's a sweet song. Wake up. There's a land that I heard of once oh. in a lullaby. It was first informed by the unbelievably fragile and irresistibly watchable Judy Garland. Yes. You can't take your eyes off her. Right. You're you're so worried when you see her that if you look away even for one instant, oh. she will shatter like like right. fine china. Right. And so you're 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 right with her, and she informs that song and uh and then oh. infuses it into us. Oh. And then I get to trigger that already infused population with that song. Right. And uh, and so so that made a lot of sense to me, Steve. Oh, it, it was beautiful. And I, I knew you had done it, but I've, I've played it several times since I've, I've been researching for this and and can't not play it uh, a lot of it as we go forward. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a place that I've heard of once in a lullaby, somewhere over the rainbow, bluebirds gonna fly, birds 
fly over the rainbow. I, oh, I can't die. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops that is where that is where you going to find me the 70s continued with some some other wonderful records you had three-way mirror um, yeah. there, there was a wonderful song obviously on there um which i think probably was one of your first hits that really started rolling on it which is i i will be in love with you right yeah I, I, exactly i'm a vegan i'm a vegan mm -hmm. love with you, a vegan love with you. and uh, uh uh and that was a record that i made under the um executive production of a man named charlie koppelman oh. charles koppelman and he was working with barbara streisand and others and he was a wonderful wonderful song man he he saw himself as a uh, as a uh, uh, as a proponent always of the great song and so uh he he gave me so much support and was so enthusiastic about me and my music no i really love charlie koppelman and he was he was a wonderful asset Oh, that's that's spectacular. And and that album you toured opening for Linda Ronstadt. I opened for Linda, opened for Air Supply, oh. uh, you know, um, Pablo Cruz. Oh. So I would I would do anything in support of my records. But certainly my time with Linda, uh, I, I toured most with Linda oh. and she I don't have to tell any of your viewers. She's just the best ever. It's something else. And what's yeah. what's fun is that around that time, who we talked about a little earlier, Carla Bonoff wrote, wrote three songs for her record around 76. Yep. And you will be with Carl um, starting on that tour on December 4th. And that has to yeah. be. Uh, uh, touring with Carla. We're doing, I think, 12 dates together. Yes. And, uh, and uh, we're traveling uh, through Ohio and then down to the Birchmere. And oh. um, uh, and then uh, out West, we'll uh, uh, bother those good citizens. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I don't think it's bo not bothersome at all. I can't wait yeah. to uh, yes. do that. Oh, Christmas there it is. Themed. I love that. Um, brisking, brisking through your, your world here, since I could be doing this with you for four hours, but we have limited time. I love, I love this, uh, the mm. 1980s, you released man's best friend. Um, and yes. around that time, um, you know, you did the tomorrow show, um, you know, uh, hosted by Tom Snyder. Do you remember uh, doing that? Oh my God. I remember it so well. And of course our oldest brother was still alive. Yes in those uh in those days and we did the tom snyder show and uh um uh, at a uh i th i think it we did a christmas show on nbc on the today show but this tom snyder show was a uh, was a really magical gathering um uh by the way uh uh yeah just before that show just a moment of the song that I wrote on the way to do that taping. Oh, because I was thinking to myself, do not show up with these siblings without being able to compete with their sorry asses. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was crossing at the corner. The day was gray, the air was cold. And suddenly it occurred to me I was easy in my soul I was crying cause I loved you The sun was shining in my shell Deftly dodging crazy taxis I'm glad I know you
Yeah, we'll play the rest of that oh. some other time. Um, oh, but, beautiful. Uh, no, I, I, I remember so clearly writing that song thinking, uh, oh. um, yeah. That is classic. Well, everybody, we're going to go back to 1981. And we're gonna sh we're gonna show you a little bit of that uh, time with the Taylor family on this show. This is so wonderful. There, you guys are sitting there talking on the steps um, and with Tom in the background, and then it's just it's beautifully the way it just comes off. There's no falsehood. There's just family. You guys are talking and laughing, having a great time. And here we go. Let's go to the Tomorrow Show for a little bit of the Taylors of the Taylor family, and if the cameras are in position, I introduce them all to you. Obviously, this is uh, Kate Taylor sitting here to my immediate left, and James Taylor, and Alex, and Hugh, and Livingston Taylor. That was just terrific. It's a joy to have you, and thank you all for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be a little bit difficult for you and I to have a face-to-face -face conversation. <laughs> Just slap me on the back of the head. All right, I will, but I, I, I hope I don't kick you in the behind with my size 13s uh, here. The concert or the appearance at Martha's Vineyard recently, how did, how did that go for you? I think that was the first time on stage as the family. How was it? How did the audience like it? Uh, how did you feel about everything? How did it go? Great. They loved it. Fantastic. It was a little bit rough, but it we was really, uh, it, was, it was real nice. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to the appearance in New York at the South Street Seaport. I think that's tomorrow night uh, for the benefit of uh, saving old ships down there. Uh, this is we'll save some old ships. Down. This is uh, New York, and audiences here expect, uh, you know, number one, the best, the best. Are you a little nervous about it? Well, or? I think uh, hopefully they will have come to the right place. Yeah, it's gonna, it's be, gonna be the best. It's sure. gonna be the best. But to tell you the truth, we could sing "Row, Row, Row Your Boat." <laughs> <laughs> and it would it would sound great. When you That's got all right. these guys up here with you on stage, yeah. you know, so people seem to really respond. To As a matter of fact, that is our, our best together. number. Spirit needs just a little bit of stoking. Twinkle for the eye, fire for the heart. There's a word that's softly spoken. When lights are dimmed and the evening gets slow, it is whispered to a baby sleeping. But now I need the world to know it's love. Yes, it is. such anguish water through the fingers now lost in the sand what would you give to bring back that moment to once more hold it in your hands boy and girl bathed in moonlight on a sultry summer evening a million years ago at that time, you were too shy to say it, but now you need the world to know it's love. Oh, let it touch me. It's love. That is just heartwarming. You know, Livingston, um, it is very interesting. Um, you know, oh, by the uh, way, sure. let me also say if you think I missed that hair, oh, are you right? <laughs> uh, heck, I'd sell any one of that crew to a star cruiser to get a full head of hair, but uh, oh, that's that's classic. Yeah, you still look great. There's there's I, no worries there. Yeah, um, you know, I, I, uh, uh, yeah, the operative word being still. Uh, oh, right. I want to get rid of the still and yeah. just, How wow, about, yeah. you look great. You look great. Right. Forget Let's the still. Let's replace with still with wow. <laughs> That's classic. Oh, my God. You look great. Yeah. Right. No, forget uh, the still. Um, That's right. But there's there is a it's been wonderful playing a lot of your music. I've grown up with your brother's music as well mm. um, and and been a, a huge fan. I think the last time I saw him live was with Carol King. Uh, oh, in, wasn't that a great tour? In the, in the I, round. I, saw, I saw that as well. I, I saw that a few times. I bet I bet you did. Oh, that was a very that's a good one. No, I'm a um, uh, 
Uh, I don't like James. Uh, uh, I prefer Livingston Taylor, but I'm a big James Taylor fan. Uh, don't, <laughs> uh, don't get yourself. Well, I love that. And I, what I've what I've noticed again, there is, you know, there is a Taylor family similarity to the sounds oh, yeah. of your voices. But mm-hmm. you have something. I don't know. There's a there's an esoteric beauty to your music with a little more something to it than your brother. And where did you uh, the, the development has been very interesting over time to probably watch his development and your development as you've been yeah. going along. Yeah. James is a first off, let's let's talk uh, quickly about what James does. Well, James is a master guitar player. Right. He's a good singer. He's a good writer. But his genius is in his guitar playing and his arrangements on guitar are simply, it's mind blowing. Is that surprising Um, to you, Livingston, that he developed that like that? Or did that seem like that was going to happen early on? No, uh, he played really an original and an exceptional guitar very early. I... Um, when people ask where I learned to play guitar, make no mistake, I learned how to play guitar from James Taylor. Mate. He would play, I would uh, mimic, try to mimic what he was doing on guitar. When I would get it wrong, he would slug me uh, in the shoulder. <laughs> wrong. You know, the little brother slug. And Beautiful. so... For the price of a sore shoulder, Steve, I got guitar lessons from James Taylor. <laughs> Small price indeed. Anyhow, right. um, uh, that's really unique. The other thing that is unique about my brother James um, is that he's been able to withstand the glare of high level celebrity Mm. and your viewers will think to themselves, Oh, wouldn't it be great to be James Taylor, Taylor Swift. Oh, poor Livingston. James gets all the lights on him. I am telling you the burden of going through life, being seen your anonymity is very very precious and valuable and how amazing for me to have been um, in the shadow of the light on my brother James, because he had to take the glare and what I got to do was see everything that was going on. So um with your uh, own with your own reputation though obviously oh yeah. no I'm 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 not a bit worried about <laughs> my capacity Ooh. as a singer as a guitar player yeah. and as a songwriter totally. make um uh, uh, uh make no mistake uh humility is not one of my uh uh most for a uh, forward traits, right? Um, uh, I'm good, and I know it. So, <laughs> so that's you know that's not um, uh, that's never been an issue for me. Um, understanding the quality of the songs that I write and the depth of my catalog, right? Um, Absolutely. But but do I? Oh God, do I need to be recognized on an airplane? I don't think so. Oh, I bet that's that. Yeah, that is a very interesting perspective, Livingston. I love hearing that. And what's what's wonderful is, you know, um, you two uh, continuing to play in life. It's wonderful to see. But we are going to go back to 1988. And I love this clip. This is from Life is Good, uh, an album that won the best outstanding folk album in Boston, which I loved uh, a few years after I graduated from college in Boston. This is a beautiful moment between Livingston Taylor and his brother, James. Mm -hmm. And this is from uh, the Life is Good album. Here's a little bit of City Lights. Mm. Rose across the Rio Grande In the middle of the night she swam All she could carry in a plain cloth sack, heading for the promised land, never coming back. 
Friends and family stayed behind The hall of crops at harvest time Oh, they think about Rosie And all those nights She spent thinking of her city life Yeah, that's just really neat to see you too. And again, uh, you you were you're you're very uh, you know kind to say yes. You don't you, you were able to kind of step aside and not have that consistent attention. But your reputation is awfully high, sir. At this, yeah, time. no, and 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 again, Steve, I'm I, I do fine. I uh, uh you know uh, yep. uh, 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 my uh, uh, I have an airplane. It's yes. not a very fancy airplane, but I get to fly it. Yeah. I fly that thing. I get to crawl into my airplane all alone and go oh. on the adventure. I get to chase channels through the clouds, and it's been very pleasant. Oh, I bet. And it was at the end of the 80s where you yeah. had a couple of big moments in your life. You decided to give up drinking and yeah, start, stopped, and start I flying. Drinking in, uh, uh, I stopped drinking in 1989. Right. And that's uh, our, our oldest brother, Alex, who died. He died of a lethal dose of alcohol. Right. Alcoholism ran in um, my family. And, uh, and I drank, but I never drank in safety. And I thought about, I, I just said, why why am I doing this? Why, right. why, uh, why would I ever consciously limit who I am? Right. And there was a phrase that came that that haunted me, a phrase that I use. It is sad to be ready and not be called. Right. And it is tragic. Yes. To be called and not be ready. Right. My job isn't to be called. My job is to be ready to be right. called. Um, the universe will decide whether they need me or not. My right. job is to be ready to be needed. Wow. And that's why I don't drink. Right. And it's not a uh, unintelligent move because of the way I've, I've, my family's been through it and it is yep. a, uh, it can be uh it can be a, well, a everybody's family has been through it yeah. and uh um uh yes no i hardly feel deprived because i didn't overpay for a bottle of uh, uh a substance uh that uh made me uh either made it seem reasonable to have right. sex with somebody that i didn't like <laughs> or um uh or, or made me sick the next day i, I, I <laughs> I, I love it when they were legalizing marijuana and they uh, uh which I also you know think is 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 an interesting idea. Yep. Um and and the argument being it's not as bad as alcohol. And I would always go, that's not a very high bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh, Enough. That's, okay, that's, let's 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 get off my personal opinion. That's classic. Ooh. Which, uh, one thing I wanted to talk about briefly was children's books. Um, yep. You've written two. Um, there was obviously Pajamas, which I think yep. was the first one, I think. And then the second one, Can I Be Good? Yeah, um, so rhetorical and, question, I assure you. Right. <laughs> so what are what were the reasons for the children's books? The reasons were the... Uh, uh, they 
a random house uh, was uh, capitalizing on my celebrity and my uh, ability to uh, write things. First off, there's no such thing as a children's book because children don't have money. So it's not possible <laughs> to sell children a book. They are, they are, they, what you're actually uh, marketing is you are marketing to parents things that they think their children or grandchildren will find worthwhile. Right. And that's fine. And so uh, Random House had the sense that uh, uh, that uh, through uh, a combination of quality of writing plus celebrity, that it would make sense to uh, pursue this. And I'm glad they did. And I was glad to take the ride. Oh, that's great. Um, and and then you did, when you after you spent 11 years at Berkeley, yeah. You wrote you wrote a textbook stage performance. Yes. Look uh, at that. Uh, that is intense. Uh, yeah, uh, a book called Stage Performance uh uh to about how to be on stage and that's what I teach at now at the uh, the Frost School of Music. Right. I teach how to be on stage. What are you doing there? Why did you come there? How do you get there? What does an audience expect of you? What do they need? Um, uh, why are they going to suspend their reality, enter your reality, right. and get enough service and joy at the end of spending time with you in the reality that you created? They need to feel better about themselves. And if they don't, they're not coming back. Right. How do you make an audience smart and bright and beautiful? Wow. And that's what I teach. Oh, that's fabulous. And it, now, it, I also have to say, um, there's a company called True Fire, True right. Fire. And I've just done an entire uh, uh, stage performance seminar for them in, uh, uh, in, a, in a number of sections. Oh, so, fabulous. Yeah, it really, it really is fabulous. And I did that about um, a year and a half ago for them. And it really encapsulates all that I've learned in 33 years of teaching. Oh, that's, that's fabulous. I love that. Um, before I say goodbye, uh, I wanted to mention, you know, the last 10 years, yeah. Last, last Alaska Moon, Blue Sky, mm -hmm. Safe Home, uh, the documentary, which yeah. I definitely want to roll a little bit of a clip of that just to show. Yeah. And I love some of the images on there. Wonderful. Mr. Taylor, I think he sees the world through rose tinted glasses, but they're not quite rose tinted, but rather rainbow. He just sort of sees everything in brighter colors. Favor us with a tune, please. Giving your all to others and it all comes back to you. When do you know when it's time, when all the masses are, are saying yeah. no yeah. and you feel to your gut 99% yes? God, that's a great question. I love you walking towards your own truth. Above all else, that rules above everything else. Who gives a rat's butt if it's successful? if you're walking towards your own truth. And guys, if there's a God in heaven, that's what I'm, I would be training you What is to the do. songwriting future for Livingston Taylor? Again, um, I'm 72. Right. Um, uh, I uh, am now in a space where uh, I just, uh, Wait for something to find. This is something that found me the other day. Ready? And I'll just play a little of it. It's Please. Uh, I say, right, right, right. It's a hell of a ride. I say, right, right, right. 
but it's a hell of a ride. I'm in, I'm born, I'm good, I'm set. Falling out of 50, but I ain't dead yet. Ain't scared of the devil, we've already met. I got nothing bottled up inside. It's still a hell of a ride. <laughs> well, that goes on. Uh, that song goes on forever, but that's the basic idea. Is that is that, that new? It is new. Ooh, well, look yeah. At, look that, at that. That's got one, two, three, four verses and two bridges, and no, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a fully developed song at this point. Oh. And I'll I've got that and a bunch of others. We'll put them on a new record. Uh, we will put them out, and we will watch them. Uh, uh, drift through the ethers. Oh, I can't wait. Well, look, Livingston Taylor, this has been an absolute honor. Um, after being a music fan for the last 50 plus years, I've known of your name so often. In fact, some mm -hmm. of those shows uh, that you played in the 70s, warming up some of those 70s bands you mentioned. That's I, right. I remember seeing Death your Row name. Tull or, or I w was out with Fleetwood Mac. Oh. Uh, uh, Jimmy Buffett and I uh, toured a lot together, and I'm still, Jimmy and I are still dear friends. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> well, I mean, we could have, there are a, a number of amazing moments in your life and career, and that's where people can go find your music on your website, on YouTube, and go and take a walk down your road, because it is a, a phenomenal road that is in no way coming to any close. You're still rocking along. You said the still. How about you're rocking along? I'll forget the word still. <laughs> Still, we gotta get that still no, out of there. No, still rocking. But good luck. All right. Good Steve, luck with this what a upcoming. Wonderful, a truly wonderful interview. It's uh, um, it. Uh, I do a lot of interviews, and it's uh, really fun when I uh, get to uh, work with a real pro. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you so much, Livingston. I'm gonna keep in touch, close touch. You're going to be at the Birchmere soon. I'd love to get over there and see you and Carla and say That'll be great. If That'll I can. But let's keep in close touch as you go along, and I'll be following what you're doing. Thanks All so much, my, my friend. friend. Great Thank to you. see you. You too. Wow. Well, that is living on music for me, to be able to spend uh, a little while with somebody like Livingston Taylor. Livingston, you're a wonderful man. Love you, man. Thanks so much for spending time with me and talking about your amazing career, your amazing family. Uh, and your musical um, life. And um, again, everybody, uh, December 12th with Carla Bonoff at the Birchmere. The show may air before that or, or after, but um, again, just want to let everybody know. And also keep in touch on Livingston Taylor, uh, his website, um, and you can really, really find some amazing live shows with this gentleman. He's still is cranking along, um, uh, you know, around 72, at 72. And just what an amazing, amazing guy. Livingston Taylor, thanks so much. Let's keep in close touch. Real quick, everybody, for Living on Music, to become part of our Living on Music Nation, if you're not already, go to our go to the Facebook page. We have, uh, gosh, 11 or 1,200 members. It's rising daily. I love it. Love people that are joining in. People are starting to post even more stuff. It's really wonderful. Um, go to Liv uh, Living on Music on Facebook um, with Steve Hauck, and you just uh, join, and uh, we'll you'll become a part of the Living on Music family, and we really have a lot of fun there, as well as you getting pinged on all of our Living on Music episodes and excerpts. Um, <clears throat> also, go to YouTube, please, if you would, and subscribe to the um, to the Living on Music YouTube channel. Um, just trying to up the antes there because that really helps in a lot of ways as you start to get more subscribers. And we have a, a whole host of about 20, 30 past shows, I believe. The Living on Music excerpt playlist is there now with about eight or 10 um, pieces on it with Jake Shimabukuru doing something by the Beatles, which is one of the most incredible clips I've ever had in my career to, to be a part of. I just love seeing him play that. It was teary. Um, also things from people like Jim McCarty, the Yardbirds drummer talking about watching Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck play right in front of him as young guitarists. You have Deborah Bonham talking about her amazing brother. Yes, him, the, the drummer for Led Zeppelin, John Bonham. And uh, what a wonderful brother he was influencing her musical life. She's now a UK blues singer, does incredibly well out there. And we talk about that on the excerpts. Anyway, that's um, on YouTube. So join um, also if you're a podcaster 
Um, Living on Music is on podcasts. It's also on SoundCloud. Um, and you can go to Spreaker, this Spreaker page, and you can see all the episodes and then also see um, all those podcasts that you may use, Spotify, um, iHeart, Google, Apple. You can go there and search Living on Music with Steve Hauck and then find an episode or an excerpt um, there. So we'd love to have you be part of the podcast world and if you do go see the show on um or listen to the show on a podcast please review it and give it give it a little thing if you like it give it a sentence because that helps too it's wonderful to have reviews coming up on living on music have some amazing people coming up george winston joins me in some excerpts uh you'll be hearing some about his songwriting he's touring now We're gonna go see him in january hopefully say hello to him in person again we've interviewed i've interviewed him several times and he's just one of the grand, grand musicians of my life is that man um, behind the keys, as well as you know, playing harmonica and guitar and things. But he's an amazing, amazing guy. We, um, we'll we be talking to him. Um, and again, uh, there we just had Peter Noon on, and what an amazing trip that was. So we can go to the YouTube channel and find Peter Noon on Living on Music. And gosh, talking about hanging with the Beatles and when he was that age and and just also growing as a musician and what it was like to uh, to kind of become so huge back then and then still be uh, in his 70s. He's selling out places all over the place. Anyway, hope everybody is safe and happy and peaceful. It's uh, in the East here. It's getting a little chillier. So we're, uh, we're, we're bundling up uh, as we go, as we speak. But live music is coming back. I'm um, going to be some amazing shows out there. My band, Second Wind, is returning after 16, after uh, two and a half years. We'll be 16, 17 years going in uh, February of this, of 2023. And we were playing La Fiamma on Franconia Road in Springfield on, on uh, Saturday, February 11th. Uh, it is the return of Second Wind. And I'd love to have some of my Living on Music Nation come by and enjoy some classic rock covers. We... We do a good job. I, I, I lead saying it's just a blast. And uh, we, what a thrill to be back um, after two and a half years of pandemic, after losing our amazing guitarist, Bob, to cancer last year. Anyway, that's second win. That's my plug uh, for my band returning on February 11th. The invites out there on Living on Music and my own page. Everybody, again, stay well, stay happy, stay safe and keep living on music. <laughs>